You're watching the ACC on ESPN. Welcome to Carter-Finley Stadium where the Marshall Thundering Herd takes on NC State in week two of college football. Good evening, everybody. I'm Keith Morehouse. Pleased to be joined by my partner, Dustin Fox, former Ohio State star. Dustin, for both these teams, last week, yeah. a statistical odyssey. Marshall scores three non-offensive touchdowns to beat Miami. And NC State out everything South Carolina, yet still lost 35-28. So what do we expect tonight? It was a bizarre game for both teams. You, you dive inside the box score, you find out a couple things. You look at Marshall's uh, game. They win, of course, beat Miami of Ohio. But they didn't do much on offense. They couldn't run the football. They didn't have many drives. They had one touchdown drive in that game, only scored 10 points. And then NC State, they lose to South Carolina in the opener. But they were awesome on offense. I mean, they moved the football up and down the field, but a couple of turnovers and a kickoff return for a touchdown uh, doomed them in week one. So the, a lot of expectations for NC State to bounce back today. In fact, you mentioned Marshall. Marshall quarterback Chase Litton was pretty critical of his performance. He can do better. He's thrown a touchdown pass in 22 straight games. He's got to have a good night tonight. Well, he knows that he's better. I mean, th this is a guy that, as a true freshman, led Marshall to 10 victories. And last year, it was a down year. Three and nine, that's not the expectation. That's not a Doc Holliday type of team. So Chase Litton wants to have a big game, and they're going to need it against an, a really stout NC State defense. Well, you mentioned that defense, and you have to mention this guy, Bradley Chubb, number nine. He'll be all over the field, and he may introduce himself to Chase Litton. Yeah, he might. He's a two-time captain, All-American, does it all. I spoke to an NFL scout this week and said, he said to me, Bradley Chubb could have been a first-round draft pick had he come out after his junior season, but he comes back. You have a bunch of guys on that defensive line that came in together. They're all seniors, and they're all back, and they're all excited for a big senior season. Should be a fun one tonight. Yeah. Look forward to it, Dustin. So it is North Carolina State, Ryan Philly. Boy, he lit it up last week. Had himself a Saturday. School record, 45 completions. We've got the Thundering Herd and the Wolfpack. Kickoff coming up next. Welcome back to Raleigh, North Carolina. A beautiful night for football down here on Tobacco Road. 75 degrees, slight wind, and the forecast is for beautiful football. Marshall Thundering Herd taking on NC State. Fourth all-time meeting between these two schools. And Doc Holliday has spent some time here in Raleigh, coached with Chuck Amato here as an assistant putting together a record of 54-37 and 37 in his eighth season as Marshall's head coach. On the other side, when you look at Dave Doran, former coach at NIU, spectacular two-year stint there, fifth year here in Raleigh, a record of 25-26, and 26 and kind of a matchup of minds here, as always, <laughs> with these coaches, trying to figure out teams that they don't really see each other all the time. Yeah, no question. A little crossover game here. It'll be a, a home and home. They have to go to Huntington next year, but take a look at Dave Dorn, fifth year here. Expectations never higher for uh, the Wolfpack. Look at Chase Litton, three-year starting quarterback for the Thundering Herd. He's done a lot of good stuff. We mentioned in the open, he didn't have quite the season last year that they would have liked, but they expect to bounce back this year. North Carolina State won the toss, but they've deferred to the second half, so Marshall will get the football to start this one. Kyle Bambard will kick it off for North Carolina State. Keep an eye on number 24, Keon Davis. What'd he do last week? <laughs> Pretty good day, right? 99-yard <laughs> kickoff return for a touchdown. 97-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. Only the 21st player in NCAA history to achieve that. So we're about set for kickoff. Carter Finley. On its feet here as the herd and the wolf pack set to go in Raleigh. The kick is short to the upper back receiver. And it's Marcel Williams who is immediately met there and met hard. Stop made by Justin Jones. Well, I promise you this week in practice, the special teams were emphasized because NC State allowed the Gamecocks to return the opening kickoff last week for a touchdown and Big time hit there on the opening kickoff by Justin Jones. Only 11 yards on the return, so there's Chase Litton. He'll trot out the Marshall offense. Again, just one touchdown last week against Miami of Ohio. It was a 98-yard drive, but Litton, uh, as we mentioned in the open, pretty critical of his performance, and he knows he'll have to do better if they're to keep pace with the Wolfpack here tonight. 
Hurd starts with a two back set. Man in motion, the handoff is up the middle. Good yardage for Anthony Anderson. Out past the first down sticks to the 29 yard line. It's a nice run on first down. Left guard Jordan Dowry opens up a big time hole and allows Anderson to run through it. Marshall just 59 yards rushing last week. Trey Rodriguez had 54 of them, so they want to establish the run. A good start for the Thundering Herd there. Litton with the step, throws to Rodriguez, who maybe got a little ahead of himself and dropped the ball. Good delivery there. Yeah, that should have been caught out of the backfield. Rodriguez, I think he felt a little footstep coming or heard some footsteps from Jonathan Austin, the cornerback, the boundary corner coming up from his position in Rodriguez probably would have picked up at least five or six yards on that play. Alston made his first start at corner last week and picked off a pass, so he has arrived, a former wide receiver. Second and ten for Litton. The give is inside to Rodriguez. Gets a couple of yards out over the 30 to about the 31. Pick up a two yards. Sets up third and long. As you look at the bottom of the pile, who comes up? Bradley Chubb. He's involved in, in nearly every play defensively. He's one of those guys that, you know, if you're an offensive coordinator, you have nightmares about. If you're an offensive tackle that has to go up against him, you've got nightmares <laughs> having to go up against him. And so uh, he's somebody you're going to want to keep an eye on. To uh, we talked to Coach uh, Huxtable this week, and he called him a freak as we've got a thundering herd defender or offensive lineman down, it looks like. I believe that's Jordan Dowry. You called his name on that mm -hmm. first run play as Doc Holliday comes out to See how his offensive lineman is. It looks like he's okay. A little gimpy as he walks off. Dowry, 6'1", 209-pound junior from Winchester, Virginia. He'll be attended to as Marshall picks it up here on third down. Eight to go. They've got to get to the 39-yard line to keep the drive alive. Crowd getting into it here. First home game of the season for North Carolina State. You're a check in the slot for Marshall. Rodriguez is the tailback. Litton with some time, and the whistles come out. So do the flags. False start. Offense, number eight. Five-yard penalty remains third down. Well, you're on the road. You're in a hostile environment. Third and ten in your own territory. The last thing you need to have happen is going the wrong direction. So a big time penalty that's going to put Marshall in an even tougher situation here. Third and 15. Wide receiver Tyree Brady called. We didn't know if he'd play tonight. Got banged up in that opener against Miami. Marshall going four wide. Third and long for the herd. And they just give it up inside. Chubb is right there and he denies Rodriguez. And so Marshall, after that initial first down, will kick it away. A very good defensive series for NC State to get off the field. Take a look at number nine. We're going to watch him all day. Look at, just gets inside. Nice swim move inside. And this is a guy that makes a lot of plays in the backfield. Kari Vedvik on to kick it away. Naheem Hines is back, stands at his 33-yard line. Vedvik with a nice kick, chases Hines back, calls for the fair catch at the 27, and we'll see the North Carolina State offense for the first time. Well, there he is. He, uh, <laughs> he, you think he had to, to ice his shoulder last week? 64 passes. Yeah, what an amazing week last week. The junior quarterback set a school record, 45 completions last week. Uh, you know who he beat? I, I think I do. But yeah, He's a good one. He's still in the NFL. Yeah. Phillip Rivers. Philip Rivers. Had, had thrown 38 completions all the way back in 2003. There's last week, 45 of 64. you got to yeah. believe Dave Doran wants to, to run the ball better as well, just like Doc Holliday on the other side. They only had 89 yards rushing last week. And he's going to keep it on the option. He's got a lot of room. The herd in hot pursuit, but Finley all the way down past the 30, deep into Marshall territory. Great call there. 
nobody thinks he's going to. He's not that mobile. He's not a guy you think is going to hurt you with his legs. Well, I talked to Coach Doran this week, and, and one of the things that he said to me was that Ryan Finley is kind of sneaky athletic. He's got more speed, more agility than people want to give him credit for. And what's surprising about this run is, you know, he was banged up a little bit last week in that South Carolina game. And on the first play of the game, they go right back to that read option. He keeps it for a huge gain. 46-yard gain on first down. Now Finley goes to the air. Finds his receiver, Kelvin Harmon. Picks up yardage down to the 20-yard line. Marshall's still trying to bring him down. Seven-yard gain, and Finley wanted to develop a better rapport with his offense. Remember, he got here June of last year and kind of took the job of a guy that everybody liked, Jalen McClendon. Yeah, McClendon was the, was the starter coming in. And then, of course, Ryan Finley uh, transfers. Graduated in three years from Boise State. Spent some time with Eli. Uh, drink wits up at, at Boise and came in and earned the job. And he had to, 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 as you said, build that rapport with his teammates. And certainly this offseason, he has done that. Finley with the give. Nice little shake by Samuels. He gets inside the 15 down to the 11-yard line. I'm sorry, that was Hines. Got him and, and the other dangerous player mixed up. Naheem oh. Hines. What a player he is. He is a speedster, and he's a first-year starter at running back, former wide receiver, uh, taking over for Matthew Days, who's now in the National Football League with the Cleveland Browns. Uh, Hines has a lot of speed. As we go, we'll talk about what he does off the field. I'm coming straight Spends a little time on the track and field team. Samuel's in motion, and that's Finley again. This time the herd had him figured out. Stop made by Blake Keller. Gain of a couple of yards. Three the, on the call. The opening drive of the game last week against South Carolina, you know, they get inside the red zone, and, and they go right to that read option. Finley pulls it out, runs it in for a touchdown, and they are not afraid to go back to it. Look at this play. A little. Well, Marshall not fooled that time either. And the herd gets some penetration and a little bit of a loss of yardage. Artis Johnson came in, made mm -hmm. the stop. Loss of five. A little, like, muddle huddle. Odd formation. Yeah, nobody home on that one. This Finley, <laughs> Finley looked around and felt awfully lonely. And that's one of those you, you may just want to hit a timeout. <laughs> the defense isn't confused at all. Myers and Lewis are at the top. Harmon in motion. Finley to throw. Plenty of time. Looks to the end zone. Got his receiver turned around a little bit. They try to get Jacoby Myers on a little wheel route. He had him. He was open. Finley just uh, airmails it. And NC State's going to be forced to kick a field goal. And this is interesting because the special teams for NC State the last couple seasons, it's been, it's been up and down. Certainly the, the, the field goal kicking has been up and down. And Carson Wise he misses a 29-yarder 20, last week, which was a big miss early in that game. This a 31-yarder for Wise. Transfer. Kick is up. And it is good. And a sigh of relief from the North Carolina State sideline as the Wolfpack scores on its first drive of the game. The field goal gives them a 3-0 lead over the herd. Back to Raleigh after this. Back to Carter Finley Stadium where the Wolfpack has taken the 3-0 lead over the Thundering Herd after the Carson Wise field goal. Keon Davis back deep and uh, they're going to try to want to keep it away from him and they did so successfully on the first kick. Yeah, he was pretty good last week. A couple turns for touchdowns, had a pick six as well. Kyle Bambard is the kickoff specialist. And they're keeping it away from Keon Davis. Marcel Williams with it. Again, North Carolina State is there. And you can tell they emphasized kick coverage this week. They had one returned against them last week in that South Carolina loss. And that's twice now. They've got tackles inside the 20-yard line. Those are huge, huge special teams plays. As you see the guys in the red jerseys running down the field. They are running down there with their hair on fire. I'm sure that it was not fun in the special teams meeting room last week when they had a chance to watch that, that opening kickoff return when South Carolina went the distance uh, nearly untouched. So those are, those are killers when those happen. And certainly last week that was, that was the case. Only 10 yards on that return for the Thundering Hurts starting 
at its own 15-yard line. Litton fakes the handoff, wants to go up top. He's looking for Brady. Brady, did he catch it? He got a foot down, and they give him the catch out to the 48-yard line. Wow, this is a, ter a tremendous throw from Chase Litton, and maybe even a better catch from Tyree Brady. On the outside, he's in man coverage against Jonathan Alston. And this ball is perfectly placed as he goes up and catches it and gets that one toe down inbounds. He's a talent. As we mentioned, did not know if he would play today. Yeah. Transfer from Miami. Had his first career touchdown catch last week. So Marshall quickly flips the field position. There's a slant inside. Brady had it, but so too did the middle linebacker. Jared Fernandez had a beat on it. Knocked it down. No, and that pass was a little bit behind Brady. He's trying to hit him on just a quick slant. A dragon route, as they call it, as a slant comes in and you try to run a little arrow behind it and confuse the defense. The football is thrown behind and brings up second down. Rodriguez is the setback. Second and ten for Chase Litton in the herd. Corner blitz. Wow, and that was Rodriguez who had nowhere to go. And you want to call his name or you want me to? <laughs> uh, we just say number nine. Yeah, I mean, this, nine. this guy is an absolute freak. They show the safety blitz, and then you know, Chubb's just a, a, a untouched as he comes down in the backfield. That was almost like a busted assignment, you would think, because he had so many bodies, so many red jerseys there in the backfield. Take a look at those numbers. Tackles for loss, second in school history with 22 and 10 and a half sacks. He is in good company with Mario Williams and Manny Lawson. We knew that fierce defensive line would pose some problems they have. There's a quick out. Completion made. It's Brady again. And a first down thundering herd. Nice composure by Litton in the pocket there. Well, Doc Holliday is certainly happy to have Brady out there this week because uh, they, were, they were talking this week like they didn't know if he was going to be able to go. And, and clearly he's out there making a lot of plays. Their best wide receiver, who, as you mentioned, played for the Hurricanes at, at Miami. Prior to last week catching that touchdown, his last touchdown was in 2015 for the Hurricanes. First and ten, Marshall's first foray into NC State territory. Litton with a quick drop and a quick throw. Catch is made again by Tyree Brady. Busy man so far. Yeah, no question. And Jonathan Alston, who is a fifth-year senior, starting at corner for the first time, former wide receiver you know, last week he played the entire game at cornerback boundary corner he hadn't taken a snap on defense in a game since high school I think they're pretty happy with how he did there's your check out in the flat he's got room down to the 28 yard line for another Marshall football uh, first down and, and Dustin you almost get the feeling they're maybe setting up the the run by throwing it early they're yeah. stretching it out a little bit here it seems like it there's a good look at Austin Jonathan Austin who He's uh, been around a long time, played wide receiver. Coach Huxtable said he held up really well last week for what they asked him to do, gave up one, one touchdown. But other than that, played really, really well against the Gamecocks. Litton wants to move the pocket now on the rollout. Looking for Brady. He's got it. Foot down. Catch is made inside the five-yard <laughs> line. Tyree Brady has been tremendous for the Thundering Herd thus far. This is the, the Brady show, the Brady Bunch. What a great wow. catch. And that's two catches now on this drive where he has showed unbelievable concentration to hold on to the football and get a foot in bounds. And a nice throw by Litton going to his left as well. Yeah. They may, may take a look at him. The ruling on the field is a completed catch. The previous play is under review. Do you see anything, Dustin, there on the early look? To me, it looked like he had, a, had the catch, but again, they'll take a look at this. That's a great look right here. You see a little, little green between yeah. that white and that, that yep. Yep. black shoe? I think you see a little bit. I don't know how you overturn that one. 25-yard pickup if it stands. Boy, from not knowing whether he's going to play to how he started today, is that's a pretty pretty good start. Well, it changes your entire game plan. The ruling on the field of a completed catch is confirmed. First down, Marshall. 
Doc Holliday's pumped up. Well fired up, yes, huh? Yes, he is. <laughs> you know, Doc spent some time here in the early 2000s. Coach Phillip Rivers. Yes, he did. And some other pretty good players. Mario Williams and some other great defensive stars for the Wolfpack. So Marshall sets up first and goal now. Bringing in some different personnel here. Trey Rodriguez, the tailback. There's the give to Rodriguez. Kicks it outside. Rodriguez looks for the end zone. Knocked out of bounds at the one-yard line. Good stop made there by Arias Moore, the linebacker. Prevents the touchdown I here. I think there might have been a hold right here on Chubb. Oh, yeah. yeah. They, they, oh. They, they missed that one right there. That's, Andy John uh, Felix. That's the best way to stop him, right? Yeah. Well, they, they missed that one, and Marsh is going to take advantage of it. Second goal from the one-yard line. Rodriguez behind Litton. Your check in motion. Fake. Roll out to Litton. Litton looks to the end zone. He finds his man. Out of bounds. Well, Marshall's going to get away with another hold. I, it looked like that's what that's what the fans were wanting. And there's a man, the Marshall receiver on the uh, far sideline is still down. That's Willie Johnson, the wide receiver. Timeout for an injured player. Johnson, 6'10", uh, 6 foot rather, 170 pound sophomore from Fort Myers. Had seven catches last week in that win over Miami, but he's been down since the culmination of that play. Two catches last year before he sustained a season-ending injury. He's a threat. He can go the distance. Got a lot of speed. Yeah, he's a legitimate 4-3-1 40-yard dash guy. Who was a, uh, a four-star recruit yeah. on ESPN.com coming out of high school there in South Fort Myers. All right, Dustin, you play offensive coordinator. You're Bill Legg for yeah. Marshall. you got to go against Street, Hill, Jones, and Chubb on that defensive line. you got to get a yard. What are you going to do here? Well, I'm on the road, so I, I know this much. I'm, I'm probably going to be aggressive here. You've got two plays to get in the end zone, really. I mean, I'm not, I'm not even thinking about a field goal oh, in this really? situation. No, no chance. I, I'm thinking about getting six or bust on this drive uh, with my offense. So if you're going to throw, if you're going to throw, this would be the down to take a shot. All Big right, we'll take down. a break here and see what happens on Marshall's third and goal when we come back to Raleigh. Back at Carter-Finley Stadium, they uh, have decided to take another look at this play when Litton hooked up with Johnson and uh, you know, see if it was a catch or not, Dustin. Yeah, when he went down. I mean, it's hard from that angle, but it looks like he has his hands under the, the football. The difference is that they initially ruled it incomplete, right? And if you can't tell if the football moves or not. It looks like he, he cradled well, it. It looked like it moved there a little bit. But you're right, on the field, they did rule it an incomplete pass. Dan Gatro is the referee, and he'll sort this out with the officials in the replay booth. That's a tough call. Well, either way... Marshall's in great position here if this is overturned or not. I mean, they are at the one-yard line with an opportunity to take the lead in this football game. And really, it's all because of Tyree Brady yeah. on that last drive. I mean, he was just remarkable. Here's a look at it now, Dustin. See, it, his foot... After review, the ruling on the field is overturned of an incomplete pass. Touchdown, Marshall. So how about that turn of events for Doc Holliday's wow. thundering herd? What they thought was third and one is now six to three with a chance to go up here 
Extra point pending. Wow. Well, that's a big turn of events. It is. And credit it, Johnson for that catch. Uh, that, that we didn't really remark on it because they called it incomplete, but mm -hmm. uh, tremendous effort by Willie Johnson. Kari Vedvik on for the point after. And it is up and through. So Marshall quiets the crowd here, and a very good crowd at Carter Finley Stadium. Chase Litton is on point right now, and another look at that touchdown. Well, take a look at Jared Fer uh, Fernandez coming in there. I, he's, he's held right there by Alex Molette, the center. They missed that. There's two missed holds on this drive for, for Marshall. But nonetheless, uh, there's Doc Holliday, very, very happy with his offensive performance on this drive. He should be. That was an 85-yard drive after Marshall started at its own 15-yard line. And there's Willie Johnson. That'll be his first, first co career, yeah, touchdown, first career catch. touchdown yep. catch. Yeah, he redshirted last year. He was uh, a little bit banged up, redshirted. So first time uh, getting some action among a bunch of new wide receivers for Chase Litton this season. Carter Finley, I think a little bit stunned after that drive. Vedvik to kick it off. Back deep is Naheem Hines. And that kick is going to go out of bounds. A coach's nightmare. Ooh. Yeah, those, those, are, uh, those are unacceptable. Kick off out of bounds. Kicking team. The ball will be placed at the 35-yard line. First down. NC State. That's like a duck hook into the woods when you're golfing. Yeah, you ever, you ever um, watch that segment on College Game Day? They, they say uh, you've got, you one, got job. one job. You've got one job, yeah. That's what a special teams coach would say to the kicker uh, after a, a play like that. However, I will say Vedvik is, actually has three jobs. He's their kicker, their punter, and the kickoff man. So he's a, he's a busy guy, but no excuse. On, on that, that play, he had one job. <laughs> That's exactly right. you gotta, you got to get that right. So the Wolfpack trailing 7-3 gets it back. 35-yard line. Finley and Gillespie in the backfield. And there's a little jet sweep. Marshall had it figured out. Jalen Samuels nowhere to go. Chase Hancock on the stop for the Thundering Herd. Jalen Samuels is the do-it-all H-back wide receiver tight end. Does it all uh, for this NC State offense. And right there, Marshall... All over it. No gain on first down. Finley to throw. Got some time. He's got a man wide open, and he overthrew his intended receiver, Jacoby Myers, right down the seam. Well, he wants that one back. Yeah, that's some sort of a busted coverage because Myers was so wide open. In fact, I think that Finley was so surprised that he was open that he just he let it go so quickly that he airmailed it. You know, one of the things that will be interesting to see is how does NC State adapt to all the man coverage that Marshall's going to play? They don't allow a lot of those free, free lanes, the access that NC State would like to have. Finley wants to throw. Here comes a delayed blitz. Knocked down. And so it's a three and out for the Wolfpack, and Marshall was going to get the football back. Eli Drinkwitz told me this week, this defense does concern him. These are the types of defenses that they have trouble with. When they have a lot of guys on the outside who play lockdown man-to-man -man coverage, it doesn't allow for a lot of open space. So there you have the last drive. They hold him to a field goal. This time, a quick three and out. Excellent start for the Marshall Thundering Herd. Nice boot there. Well done. Chases Rodriguez back to the 17-yard line where Marshall will take back over. But a good effort by the Wolfpack there. Punter is A.J. Cole, the third. So Chase Litton's got to be excited about their start from an offensive standpoint. They've protected him pretty well, and he's distributed the ball. 83 passing yards, four of those throws went to Tyree Brady for 75 yards. So pretty much it was the Litton-Brady combination on that last touchdown drive. 47-yard punt there as Marshall takes over. Rodriguez the tailback. Litton, quick drop. 
Juracek makes the grab. Picks up about six yards out to the 23-yard line. That'll be now 31 games in a row for Ryan Juracek with a reception. I believe that's the second longest in FBS. His father, the athletics director at Houston, and Ryan Juracek took out a little GoFundMe page to help all the people down there. That's awesome. Who were impacted by the hurricane. Second and four. There's the give inside. Keon Davis has some room. Davis turning it on into North Carolina State Territory. Davis in a foot race. Drag down at the 19-yard line. Wow, this is going to be a huge hole here. Look at that double team on the inside between your center and your left guard, Jordan Dowry. And then Davis is just off to the races. We talked about him last week against Miami, had those two kickoff returns. He didn't play as much on offense because he was so winded from all the, the return yardage. But you can see the excellent speed here. And I think everyone on this NC State team and the fans here at Carter-Finley are a little bit stunned. 53 yards on that run by Keon Davis. They spot him at the 23-yard line, so Marshall sets up shop in Wolfpack territory. Another quick drop. That's Rodriguez. Rodriguez gets down inside the 20 to the 17-yard line. Gain of about seven. Really like how Marshall's offense is mixing it up. Very balanced so far with their run-to-pass ratio. I, I, I like it. Spreading it out, keeping NC State on their, on their toes. Second down, long four. Rodriguez into the teeth of that defense, and you're not going to get very far doing that. They well, that, converged on him there. That's the thing. I mean, you, you want to run the football, I get it. I mean, that's part of your philosophy, but you also have to realize the challenge that you're up against. And sometimes you, you don't want to, like, necessarily wave the white flag, but you want to say, hey, we know it's going to be very difficult. Let's do some other things. Let's run on the outside, try to get some outside zone, some of those bubble screens on the perimeter, those extended kind of run plays that are passes. You see the balance, seven runs, ten passes. Third and three for the Thundering Herd. Juracek in the slot. They roll the pocket again. Litton threw a little too tall for his intended receiver, Marcel Williams. So that will bring in the field goal unit and Kari Vedvik. For his second job. Yes, that's right. So after the Keon Davis explosion, the best the Hurt can do would be able to put three here on the board. Vedvik, his first career field goal last week, and that went over Miami. This one from 33 yards. Kick is up. And it is good. Kari Vedvik, perfect on the year as the Thundering Herd. Puts a touchdown together and a field goal. They lead it over the Wolfpack here in Raleigh. 10-3, your score. Naheem Hines and the Wolfpack about to get the football back. Trailing 10-3 to the Thundering Herd. And um, this guy can go, and there, there's some evidence. Oh, no question. He is on the 4x100 meter relay team. They won the 2017 Outdoor Track Championship at the 4x1. He can flat out go. He's a legit sub-10, 500-meter guy. And they're going to kick it to him from the three-yard line. Trying to find the seam. Good coverage on special teams by the Thundering Herd. Tackle made by Malik Gant, the safety. 17 yards on the return. And the thing about Hines is he's a home run hitter, got tons of speed, but he still needs to develop a little bit more of that grit that they want from a tailback who's going to be out there every single snap. You know, they had some of that with Matthew Days last year. Tough to replace that. He's now in the National Football League. And so you've got Reggie Gillespie, Naheem Hines in the backfield. And they're really trying to find a bell cow back there. And uh, I think Hines can do it. He just needs more experience. First and 10 for the Wolfpack from their 20-yard line. And that's the give. Nothing doing there. Hines met by the Marshall front four. No gain. Coaches always say, never leave your feet as a ball carrier. It's always dangerous to do. You know, the risk versus reward is just tough. He hurdles over one of his own men right there and comes up for no gain. 
Ty Tyler on the stop for the Thundering Herd. Second and 10 for the Wolfpack. Four wide. They try to get inside. Omari Cobb on the stop after a gain of about three yards. Give him four yards on that carry. It'll be third and six for North Carolina State. Keith Morehouse, Dustin Fox with you from Raleigh, North Carolina. Fourth all-time meeting between these two schools. NC State 3-0, and but getting tested here early. Locklear in motion. Finley wants to throw, gets his man, and it's enough yards to move the chains. Catch out there by Emeka Amizi. Eight-yard gain. Amizi's a true freshman, had his first catch of his career last week. This will be his second. They finally catch Marshall in a little bit of zone coverage, working against Jalen McLean Sapp out there. There's the handoff to Hines. He picks his way for good yardage out to the 37-yard line. Yeah. A little tempo here from NC State picking it up. One of the things that Eli Drinkwitz said to us this week was on offense they have three things they want to do. They want to have rhythm, they want to attack, and obviously they have to execute. Finley, quick drop, quick throw, completion made. That's Locklear on the catch, right where the sticks are. You know, last and week, that's a first down. You know, last week, Keith, there were nine different receivers that caught passes from Ryan Finley. That's a lot. Yeah, when you, when <laughs> that's you complete, a lot of different targets. When you complete 45, you've got to bring in a bevy of receivers, right? Hines is the tailback. Another quick throw. Catch is made. And easy again. Picks up good yardage. And like you mentioned, a little better tempo for the Wolfpack here. I think they're going to have to do that because... For whatever reason, Marshall's doing a good job defensively. They've got a good beat on what NC State has done early in this game. And so they got to keep them on their toes. There's the give to Hines inside. Hines finds the sledding tough out to the 49-yard line. Sets up third and three for the Wolfpack. Malik Thompson makes the stop for the Thundering Herd. Big third down here for the Huge Wolfpack. Huge third down. You wouldn't think that you'd be in sort of a dogfight in the first quarter against a team that's not a non-Power 5 school. That struggled last year, to be quite frank. Finley needs the 48-yard line. Pressure over the middle, drops, and it is dropped. That's rare. That is a rare drop from Jalen Samuels. Jalen Samuels does not do that very often. No, this no, guy, no. He catches everything. That is the end of the first quarter. They want the ball in his hands as much as they can, but that was a tough one there. As big third down. That's the end of the first quarter in Raleigh, North Carolina. Marshall's thundering herd and the passing game. Working on a 10-3 lead over NC State. Coach Doc Holliday's thundering herd in front of NC State here, 10 to three. Marshall's defense has held on third down. So the Wolfpack to punt it away. Well, end over end shot that Rodriguez takes at his nine yard line. He open about Marshall's ability to run the ball or lack thereof last week. They've already got more yards tonight than they did all of last week yeah, on the you, ground. You think about what sort of run defense they're going up against. Uh, very impressive. Last week, NC State held South Carolina to just 31 yards in that game. Today, 63. Now, a lot of it was on that one me. run. That yeah, one still, run. But, still, but yeah, I mean, it counts, right? Yeah. Well, they had 59 yards against Miami last week. Right. You know, 2.6 yards per carry. Right. That NC State defensive line averages nearly 300 pounds up front. And they are busy and experienced. Litton with the give to Rodriguez. Met quickly by a host of 
Wolfpack defenders. You know, I, I don't know how you can ever design a run that goes at number nine because he's just everywhere. I mean, he's he's so long. Even on this, this last run, I mean, he just gets an arm on Rodriguez at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down. So very, very difficult task here that Marshall faces. They're lucky they've had a couple of big breakout runs, but so far, I mean, those big boys up front of the NC State defensive line are holding up. Gain of a yard on first down. Linton now wants to throw it. And he uh, throws it short of his intended receiver. Marcel Williams sets up third and nine. I, I get the sense that if Marshall's going to win this football game or stay in the game, they're just going to have to have big plays. You know, I, it's going to be tough to put together sustained drives against this defense. They're just too big and physical. They're going to have to hope that on the outside, they get some matchups they like with Tyree Brady for some more of those big plays. Or some of these breakout runs, it's going to have to happen. That's what they didn't have a season ago. And the whole offensive line moved uh, on that one, I believe. False start. Offense, number 55. Five-yard penalty remains third down. Marshall one for three on third downs, and this is going to push them back even farther. And uh, they may uh, they may just go the ground route here. I'm not sure they want. They certainly don't want to turn it over down here. Yeah, take your medicine, try to get yourself a little bit more room for your punter. And Chase sees something at the line of scrimmage there. Well, Brady had single coverage out there. Now they've dropped back. He's going to sling it, and it was overthrown, intended for Willie Johnson. You know that is one thing though that. Bill Legg told me this week, Chase Lutton does have more discretion at the line of scrimmage. He, he does have the ability to make some checks. He's become smarter with the offense. He recognizes things. Maybe he saw something there on that third down that made him just decide to throw the football. Well, at the very least, at least it was a, a safe throw. He didn't throw it over the middle there. Vedvik taking his time on the rugby-style kick, and he gets a good hop. It's going to roll into North Carolina State territory all the way inside the 40. Good kick from Vedvik down to the 38-yard line. It's about as good as you can get. You know, Vedvik runs that uh, rugby style. You said he's holding on to it long. He's holding on to it for a reason. For a reason. He, get wa his he guys wants to down get there. his coverage team down there, and certainly, you know, they get past midfield. That's a great kick. Well, you you got to appreciate the fact that he can kick it conventionally and do the rugby kick. There aren't a lot of guys who, who do that. That way, you have that that dual threat. However, down. you want to kick it out. He had a big one last week in that win over Miami that pinned uh, the Red Hawks back on their final drive. 57 yards on that one. So here comes the NC State offense. Ryan Finley, transferred from Boise State, leading the charge here. This time it's a little toss outside. Hines tried to get something, but Marshall's defense they're, sw stout out they're, there. they're swarming the football right now. Jaquan Uli, a highly sought-after player who originally committed to Alabama. We'll see number two come in here and make the stop. Just look how many white jerseys are around Naheem Himes right there. Very impressive defense so far. Finley now on a little screen pass. Oh, tremendous oh. play by the safety Malik Gant who came up quickly to make sure Jalen Samuels didn't get out in the open because he is dangerous. Malik Gant getting the start today in the first half because C.J. Rivas is out suspended with the targeting call last week. That is a tremendous tackle in open field. The coaches were raving about Gant's ability as a safety. He says he's got great range. That means he can cover a lot of, a lot of space, a lot of ground in a quick period of time. Unbelievable tackle there. There's another little quick give. This time, oh. Another great tackle by Hines. Shook free for a minute, but the herd was there. Another tackle by Malik Gant. Going to force a punt. Crowd getting a little restless too, Gus. Absolutely. Justin. He should be restless after last week's performance coming home. And, you know, the offense, I don't know. I don't know. Do you get the sense, Keith, that the offense is a little flat right now? Yeah, they, they don't seem to have found their, their rhythm. No. Not like the game I saw last week. And Eli talks about that rhythm being so important, so vital to this offense. And you're right, I, I just don't see it so far. Cole to punt it away for the Wolfpack. High kick, Rodriguez fair catch at the 16-yard line. 
The Thundering Herd giving the Wolfpack all they want here in Raleigh. Second quarter, Herd leads at 10-3. Doc Holliday's Thundering Herd up 10-3. 54-37 career. As we mentioned, uh, 2014 conference champions and a former assistant under Chuck Amato here in Raleigh. They honored the NC State basketball team during the break. Kevin Keats, head coach there. And just to keep this flow going, Keats used to be an assistant at Marshall. Full circle. First and 10 for the herd from the 11. And there. <laughs> he makes every play. That's that little zone read, Dustin. And, yeah. and if Chase Litton looks over there and sees number nine, maybe he should keep it. I'm, I'm not a football coach, but. Look at number nine. He just beats G. Felix on the outside, comes in the backfield, nowhere to go. Loss of three yards on first down. Bradley Chubb. Litton wants to throw it out of the backfield, and his receiver fell down. Did not hit him in stride. Keon Davis had nowhere to go. We talked about Bradley Chubb. What a what bloodlines he has for football. His father played in the NFL. His brother, Brandon, played at Wake Forest. Plays oh. for the Detroit Lions. Yeah. Currently, he's on the injured reserve. And a pretty good player by Nick Chubb, uh, name his cousin at Georgia. He's a good little running back. Yeah, they do okay. Real good running back. Third and eleven for the Thundering Herd. Crowd getting into it here at Carter Finley Stadium. Litton to throw, had pressure, lofts it up there, has his man. Brady again down to the 33-yard line. Single coverage, and Brady exposed the secondary again. Brady's a big-time player. He's a little slow getting up there. You want to keep an eye on that. But what a, what a tremendous throw by Litton, who takes a shot as he throws this. But what a tremendous catch. And you see the speed of, of Brady working against Alston there, the, the corner number five. Now Brady's out of the game. You want to keep an eye on that. Remember, coming into this game, he's been battling something. So they were a little unsure as to he'd be able to go. He has been the entire offense so far for the Thundering Herd. They marked him back uh, as he went out of bounds at the 47-yard line. So that's where Marshall sets it up, first and 10 in North Carolina State territory. Quick look out to Marcel Williams. Gets a little bit of a block. Spin move. Makes something out of nothing for a gain of four yards. Well, they're sort of the backup plan. If Brady can't go. Marcel Williams is the number two receiver. But he'll move out and play that X position if he has to. He has worked his tail off at this moment. Marcel Williams has. There's a look at Brady. They need him back in this football game. We'll keep an eye on where he goes and his intentions here second and seven Litton fakes to Davis over the middle the aforementioned Marcel Williams on the grab down to the 30 yard line Litton looks really poised tonight very comfortable when you think about it very difficult circumstances to go up against this front because you always know that on any given play one of those big defensive linemen could be in the backfield. He has stayed very poised, delivering the football to his wide receivers on time and on target. That was a great throw, great catch for Marcel Williams. Jarius Moorhead on the stop for the pack. Marshall with a new set of downs. They roll the pocket again. He looked for Williams, but good coverage out there this time. And I think that is smart, the way that they are rolling that pocket, uh, Keith, as you talk about how sometimes in the pocket, he, you, you allow those guys a free rush. Well, you move it, you get those guys on them. They don't know what to expect. So that's a that's good way for Marshall to move it and get those guys on the perimeter, finding guys like Marcel Williams. And look at the offense already with 10 points tonight. That's all the offense put up last week. Lit into the air again, finds his receiver, ball is out. Was it a catch? They're that's, ruling it incomplete on the field. That's incomplete. Marcel Williams had it, and Jarius Moorhead was thinking end zone. Well, 
Well, that's a great tackle from Jonathan Alston as he comes up. Now, obviously, this is slow motion, so if they want to look at this again, you'd have to run it in full speed. Got to make a football move. That is yeah, an in, that's an incomplete pass. Good, good call. call by the officials on the field. Marshall going to stay out there. And it looks like the herd wants a timeout. Doc Time Holliday and his thundering herd out in front of the Wolfpack here. On a beautiful night for football in Raleigh, North Carolina. Conference USA versus the ACC. And he's been the star of the show for the herd thus far, Tyree Brady. Looks like he's coming out. He's had to sell himself a night. Yeah, he's a star. I, I talked to an AFC scout this week who told me that he may be one of the top prospects in this entire game between both schools. He said, they said, he's a dude. You know what that means. <laughs> he, he's a bad, bad dude. Yeah. Crowd rising to its feet here. Davis in motion. They hand it off inside to Anthony Anderson, who only picks up a yard or two. Number 21, Anthony Anderson on the tackle. What do you think, Mr. Huntington? Vedvik's range? He can kick it. He's got the leg for it. They'll bring him mm -hmm. out. It's going to be a 45-yarder. vex has got enough leg. And plenty of leg as Kari Vedvik knocks it through from 45 yards. Marshall came to play tonight, huh? There's some fans there celebrating the herd, and that's great, a, that, great that was good from 55. Yeah, that was an excellent kick from Vedvik, and boy, the Marshall Thundering herd have decided they wanted to come play some football tonight. Very, very impressive start to this game. They're doubling up on NC State's offense. Think about this. Marshall has 223 yards of total offense to just 93 of NC State. They always say you try to make your best improvements from week one to week two, and they have done that on offense for sure. Well, I'll tell you what. Well, the one thing you know is that that test last week against Miami, Ohio, uh, that's a good football team, a team that won their final six games of the year last year, almost beat Mississippi State in the bowl game. They had everybody back. So that's a big win for Marshall. That's not your average mid-American conference team. And a lot of confidence coming in here, the Thundering Herd have. Miami picked to contend in the Mid-American Conference East Division. Vedvik kicks it deep. And here comes the fast man, Hines. Good return out over the 30-yard line. They'll set up at the 32. Naheem Hines trying to get this offense jump-started because they have struggled since that opening drive. You know, just looking down at NC State's sideline, there is no emotion right now. I mean, they're down 10 points here at home to Marshall. You need somebody to get them going. They need, they need some big play, something positive to build off of right now because NC State has really, really looked flat and out of rhythm. Since that first Finley run, they've uh, gathered fewer than 50 total yards. There you go. There's his wide open receiver. That's Harmon out over... The 45 to the 47-yard line. Well, Marshall's done such a great job locking down these wide receivers on the outside. They're playing, you know, th their defense is based off of man principles. So they don't care who they're playing against. They're, they're going to lock up with anybody. There's the give. Hines still trying to find some room. Marshall's defensive front, as you mentioned, has done a nice job. Yeah. Keller, Harris, B, and Couch. Gain of a yard for... Naheem Hines. And, and I've just noticed we talked about Samuels a lot. Hasn't really gotten him involved mm -hmm. thus far. Yeah, I mean, for a guy who had 15 catches last week, it's surprising that, you know, so far in this game, he only has three targets. He goes in motion. He tied a school record. Now they look over the middle. He's got his man, Stephen Lewis. 
down to the 28-yard line. Yeah, Stephon Lewis is a big physical wide receiver who they want to get more involved in this offense. You know, last year he led the team in reception yardage. Third in the ACC, 19.7 yards per catch. He's a big play wide receiver. Samuels was pretty much a decoy on that play, and it, it worked to perfection for NC State. First and 10 from the 27. There's the give. Room off the left side for Hines. Down the 22-yard line. It's a big hole led by Garrett Bradbury. Look at number 65. Wall that off and allow that big hole for Hines to run through. Bradbury, of course, the leader up front of the Band of Brothers. Yeah. That's what they call the offensive line here at NC State. They're missing their best offensive lineman, Will Richardson, suspended for the first two games. He'll be back next week for Furman. Here's the give to Hines again. Hines in a traffic jam and nowhere to go. Amari Cobb was there with some help. Frankie Hernandez also on the stop. Nowhere to go. A lot of thundering herd jerseys there. Big third down coming up here. As Ryan Finley surveys the defense. Got a trip set at the bottom of the screen. Keep an eye on number one. He's the bottom of that bunch coming in motion. There's Jalen Samuels. They fake the jet sweep and throw it up inside. Lewis breaks free. Touchdown, NC State. Well-designed play for 24 yards. Well, they bring Jalen Samuels in motion right there. He's a decoy. And then they come right back to the tunnel screen to Stephon Lewis. Poor tackling by Marshall as he breaks through two tacklers on the way to the end zone. And that's exactly what the Wolfpack needed. Carson Wise on to add the point after. And he boots it. Barely. Up and through a low liner, but it counts. Hit the goalpost. And the crowd here in Raleigh gets to celebrate as Lewis breaks a tackle and breaks into the end zone. Stephon Lewis from West Palm Beach, Florida. Big play player for them a year ago. Averaged 17 yards per catch last year. And he went to work. Yes, he did. Showed his size at six foot two, 217 pounds. Carries his weight very well as he moves very well, breaking through those tackles and route to the end zone. Okay, the Wolfpack howling here at Carter Finley. I like that. Yeah, it is cool. Oh. They had a big Wolfpack yeah. fountain out front too. This is nice. It's all good. They they love their pack down yes, here. They do. High kick. Taken by Marcel Williams at the nine. Williams looking for some blocking. Gets a little bit. Their best return thus far will set them up at about the 25-yard line. Chase Linton has been very impressive so far tonight. 12 for 19, 152 yards. Pretty efficient. Yeah, you talked about how he's distributing the ball and kind of keeping that ferocious front four a little bit at bay by moving it around. He's, he's targeted six different receivers. First and ten for the herd, leading it here 13-10 in Raleigh, North Carolina. Litton wants to throw, has his receiver. He slips free. That's Brady. Brady going to the house. Touchdown, Thundering Herd. <laughs> Is this guy legit or what? Are you kidding me? You got to be sure of that tackle out on the perimeter. 
75 yards. Tyree Brady, how about this? You come up, you're right. You gotta, you gotta come outside in. You got all your defenders inside. Jonathan Alston, who is new to playing defense, you've got to make that tackle. If you miss it, there is no help behind you. And Tyree Brady, how about the speed? 75 yards. The transfer from Miami played for the Hurricanes in 2015. He went to JUCO and is doing big things for the Thundering Herd. His second career touchdown for the Herd, and Vedvik knocks home the extra point. And now the crowd just as lively as they were a moment ago. Hushed. 188 yards receiving already on yeah, the night. Yeah, that's a 31-yard average. How about this? And take a look at the play. Poise from Litton. It's just a comeback. Right at the sticks. I mean, how, how many receivers would you see, Dustin, that wouldn't have come back on that little curl and waited for the ball? He went back and got it, and that enabled him to kind of escape. Yeah, it, it just, just the speed, too. I mean, you watch as he runs away from the NC State defenders, and, and that's one of the issues with that NC State defense. They have got a corner who's missing with an injury, Mike Stevens. He's out. You know, Dexter Wright's a little banged up here, too, at the safety position. And you've got a new corner and Jonathan Alston starting back there. So that's, that's one area. Up front, they're good. Solid, senior, deep. But the secondary is probably the biggest concern in tackling. You see it right there. Freddie Phillips tore his Achilles last week in that South Carolina game trying to tackle Jake Bentley, and he was uh, one of the one of your stars of their yeah. secondary. Vedvik to kick it deep. Himes at his goal line. Gets a little bit of blocking, and then the Marshall pursuit catches up. Out to the 20-yard line. Malik Gant's been in on a bunch of tackles. Number 29, he's there for the herd. So back to offense and Ryan Finley. Yeah, and that was a big answer for Marshall because I, I thought that NC State on that last drive, the Stephon Lewis touchdown catch, that was going to get them back in the game. You know, the defense, if they could have got a stand there, you know, all of a sudden maybe start feeling a little bit better about your chances here against Marshall. But it's, it's back to a 10-point game. With five minutes to go in the second quarter. First and ten from the 20-yard line for the pack. Finley empty backfield. Quick drop over the middle. Looking for Samuels, but good coverage there. You just don't see that symmetry in that offense that we saw last week against South Carolina. It, well, the coverage doesn't allow for the tempo and rhythm. It really doesn't. And, and right now, you're just looking. And that was good defense from Chase Hancock, number 37, on Jalen Samuel. There's the give. Trying to kick it outside. And he's got speed. He can do it. Good hit. But Jalen Samuels gets out on the perimeter where he loves to do his work. Now, Jalen Samuel is one of the leaders of this team. Watch at the end of this run. This is what you need on the sideline. He's going to lower his pad right here and deliver the boom. Right here. Boom. He wants to deliver the blow, and that's something that can get a sideline energized over there. And right now, they've been pretty flat so far in this game. First down now for the Wolfpack as Finley wants to go to the air again. This time... Checks out to Samuels. Gets a great block, but Marshall's pursuit is there. Kelvin Harmon leveled the defender, but the rest of the uh, secondary came up to meet him. Look at, look at the pursuit. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's a big-time block from Harmon. But again, the pursuit of this Thundering Herd defense has been very impressive. Loss of a yard, second and 11. There's a quick slant. Jacoby Myers out to the 46-yard line. One of the things that Eli Drinkwitz was talking about this week was free access for his wide receivers. Not many occasions against this Marshall defense where you have free access because of the way that they come up and press you at the line of scrimmage. That last play, a little bit of free access. Here's some more. Lewis again. And Finley starting to get a rhythm. You get that feeling. Hancock on the stop, but a gain of eight yards on first down. Second. 
There's a quick look the other way to Harmon. Harmon met immediately. A good stop. Yuli came over to finish it off. Coverage out there by Rodney Allen. But it's enough for another North Carolina State first down. Nice little drive here. NC State, six plays, 40 yards so far. Finley with the quick snap, then he gives it on the reverse. Samuels gets away from one, but not two. See, this is very good discipline from the Marshall defense. NC State's trying to confuse them. They've got the wide receivers shaking their, their hands and thinking that they're getting the pass. Watch it. See, Finley's going to fake it, and then, of course, he comes back with the reverse, but the patience and discipline to stay at home from Marshall is really terrific right there. The linebacker, Jaquan Yuli, turned him inside, and the rest of the help arrived, so that is... A gain of a yard after all that. There's another trick play. The throwback to Finley. Finley's got Samuels. He's got some green. Touchdown, NC State. Thirty-nine yards. Dustin, you don't often see two trick plays in a row. Remember that movie Little Giants and they ran the annexation of Puerto yeah. Rico? They had the trick play. This is, this is like the annexation of Puerto Rico. How about this? You hand it off, Gillespie, you toss it back. Myers flicks it back as a flea flicker, and nobody covers Samuels down the sidelines on the wheel route. If Wide open. If there's one guy you're not going to leave open, it should be number one, right? Yeah. <laughs> Got to have a body on number one. He's the top target for Ryan Finley. His 30th straight game with the reception. He's a special athlete, that's for sure. The ruling on the field is a catch and a touchdown. The previous play is under review. They want to make sure that his knee wasn't down before he reached he across out. the yeah reached across the goal line. I like how Harmon pulls off there at the end, too. Oh, that looks like he's in. From, from that angle. Our uneducated angle up here. <laughs> what a play. That's one of those plays that you play defense. You turn around and say, uh-oh. After review, the ruling of the field of a touchdown is confirmed. Well, that'll get this building rocking. Second team preseason All-American, Jalen Samuels. You could tell. You mentioned that hit he put on the Marshall defender. It was like, all right, guys, these guys are obviously here to play. Let's go. Well, someone had to do it. And, and why not be Jalen Samuels? Got flags coming in from the end zone. Looks like it might be on Marshall. Substitution infraction. Defense, 12 men in formation. That penalty is declined. Retry. Dave Dora in his fifth year here in Raleigh. Big expectations of this team. Some thought they would be a dark horse. And they still can be in the oh, ACC. They, yeah, I mean, listen, last week was a non-conference game. The kick is up and good. Carson Wise makes it a three-point ball game again. The herd with some thunder. The pack with an answer. Back to Raleigh after this. You get a look at Jalen Samuels. Who just had the big touchdown reception. One of the things I like about him is you know, he was not a highly recruited player out of high school. So he came into NC State with the chip on his shoulder. And the one thing he really wanted to do as a senior was become more vocal and more of a leader. You know, that one hit on the sideline in front of his teammates when he delivered the blow to a thundering herd defender. I really think that was something that can awaken his teammates. He sensed it. You know, not a lot of excitement, enthusiasm on the NC State sideline. 
as you take a look at Samuel's numbers for his career, just terrific. Yeah, 17 career touchdowns now, Dustin. He's a, such a versatile threat for the Wolfpack. Two minutes ago before halftime, the herd will get it back. Keon Davis finding a little seam. Davis outside. Good return out to the 41 yard line. That's the Keon Davis they saw last week. And in every time you think NC State's trying to steal some momentum, well, Marshall just goes ahead and takes it right back. That is a great return. It's going to give Marshall phenomenal field position to start this, this next drive. These two teams have rolled up the offense. Well, and, and you think about this, too. If you're Marshall, how much confidence do you have now? You, you put up 20 points against an NC State, a vaunted NC State defense. The Herd 2 and 11 all-time versus the ACC. Beat Maryland in the uh, Military Bowl and Clemson back in 99 when they went undefeated with Chad Pennington at quarterback. First and 10 for the Herd. Litton to throw. Going up top, but that was more of a throwaway. He had some pressure coming. And he's going for Brady again on the outside. I think it was a double move. Sometimes those double moves can throw off a timing of, of a route between a, a receiver and a quarterback. He's smiling about it. But you're right. I mean, there was some pressure definitely in the face of Litton. He's saying, I'm going to get rid of that football. If you're Dave Huxtable, you want, you want to get some pressure on him. They really haven't gotten to him. Second down, he wants to throw it again. Quick sideline route. Nice coverage out there. Tremendously guarded by Nick McLeod. And he's talking to Brady, and Brady's talking back. A little smack talk on the outside. I like that. That really good coverage. McLeod is all over this. He gets that offhand in there to swat that football away. They're trying to run a, a quick out to, to the sticks. Did you ever talk smack to a Michigan wide receiver? I talk smack with my my, uh, my shoulder pads, Mr. Morehouse. Well, I like that. I was, not a, I was not a smack talker. That's all right. Lead by example, right? Just a try. Third down the crowd. Loud here at Carter Finley. Litton. A little comeback round. It didn't look like Willie Johnson ever came back for it. So a three and out for the herd, and North Carolina State will get it back with a uh, minute 43 to go. And all three of their timeouts left. That not one of Marshall's better offensive series, obviously. Kari Vedvik on to kick it. It's not, but it's a good stop for NC State. The last two drives for Marshall resulted in a field goal and a touchdown. And so now maybe you get some confidence back for your defense getting the three and out. Well, they brought the house and nearly got him. Hines calls for the fair catch at the 18-yard line. It's been an entertaining first half of football. Will they go back to their Mr. Everything? Here's the play I was talking about in that last drive. Watch the end of this run. This is an intimidation factor. This is get, this is get everybody on your sidelines awake, and then it leads to this. The flea flicker, throwback pass to Samuels for the huge house call, which brings NC State within three points. It's like basketball. When you're hot, you say, give, give me the ball. Give me I'm, the rock. I want to do it. Yeah, and, and that's what you like. I mean, he said he wants to be more vocal. I think that also includes saying, hey, put it on my shoulders. I'll do it. Right. Finley now on first down. Wants to throw. He's got a good pocket. Do it above his intended receiver. Jacoby Myers. For number 11, Jacoby Myers. Chris Jackson on the coverage. Good coverage on the corner by Chris Jackson, who had a uh, an interception return for a touchdown last week in that week that plays for the herd over Miami. Reggie Gillespie the second is the tailback. They're throwing. Finley is flushed. And he just has to go down at the 21-yard line. Chase Hancock was waiting for him there. Now, this is a big third down. If you take a look at the clock, you see that we're approaching a minute to go in the first half. Now, if you're Marshall, if you can somehow get off the field here, 
not only do you have a chance to go in with a three-point lead at halftime, but you may be able to add more points. See what Finley has dialed up here. Marshall trying to get pressure. He throws it to the outside. Oh, there's a lot of contact. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's easy call. That was Rodney Allen, and he uh, was engaged. Let's just put <laughs> it that way. Yeah, Mr. Allen very engaged on the outside. Pass interference. Defense, number 11. The ball be placed at the spot of the foul. First down. Well, the senior from Dallas, Texas, gives him a freebie here with 52 seconds to go. And they've got big play potential. You don't have to tell anybody on Marshall's defensive staff that they've seen it all week. Finley again over the middle. Finds his receiver, Harmon, who nearly breaks free. But he gets it out to the 47-yard line. 43 seconds and look, now. And NC State's going to hurry up here. They're going to let these chains get set. With three timeouts, there is plenty of time for Ryan Finley and Eli Drinkwitz to work. Finley this time chased down, and he's taken down. Ryan B., the defensive tackle on the sack. Now they have to use one of those timeouts. I think it's the first time we've called his name, Ryan B., who was one of the... Timeout. Timeout. The NC first State. guys... It is their first. It will be 30 seconds. Chuck Heater was talking to us about this week. A couple storylines in the ACC this week, huh? Saw some of that when Louisville mm -hmm. outrunning North Carolina. Lamar Jackson, um, he is still the Heisman holder, right? Not according to everyone else, apparently, because he, he gets no love. I mean, he's just doing his, his job every week. I mean, just keeps going out there, putting up big numbers. And the thing that surprised me, how about the Blue Devils? Yeah. Got a, big, a Big Ten squad that everyone thinks is kind of underrated. Northwestern comes in and Duke hammers them. Everybody talking basketball recruiting, and the Devils are 2-0. <laughs> yeah. And Wake Forest is in Boston today, Chestnut Hill, and look what the Demon Deacons did. Dave Foston doing a really good job down there at Wake Forest. This is a fantastic league. I mean, yes, there, there are some that will argue the point that it's as good as the SEC. We'll see as the season unfolds, but they have some tremendous talent. Second and 14 now. 32 ticks to go. Marshall's showing blitz, and then they back off, and they give it up inside. Good yardage for the Wolfpack. Reggie Gillespie. They'll move the chains and then start the clock here. Timeout. NC State. NC State it takes another second. timeout. It will be 30 seconds. 14 yard gain for Gillespie. That's a nice pick up there. You get the first down, but you have to call it the timeout because you, you, with 26 seconds to go, you can't afford to allow another 8 to 10 seconds to tick off before you get the next play in. Got to keep that last one though. That last timeout is so vital because you want to be able to, to get that timeout in case you want to run your field goal unit on the field. Great play call there by Drinkwitz. Yeah. Everybody thinking about pass, and they and they they go with the draw and gain 14 yards. Well, we talk about Eli Drinkwitz and what he looks for in his quarterbacks: toughness, preparation, decision making, accuracy, leadership. I think leadership's the most important out of all those things, honestly, because you you are the most important player on the field. You're the coach on the field. You're the guy that everybody looks to, and and that is really where. The coaches feel Ryan Finley has taken his game to the next level this offseason. Those are great adjectives for a quarterback. You get that, you've got a pretty good one. Finley now with plenty of time goes to the far side, delivers. Caught by Lewis. Close to the sticks at the 31-yard line, 22 seconds to go. Well, this drive has been surgical. Yeah, it's been very, very efficient. Second and one on the 29-yard line. And the fans are thinking, well, why didn't you do this the whole game, right? It's, it's that simple, right? The mentality always changes for a defense oh, yeah. in, in a two-minute no-huddle situation. Second and a yard as if the down really doesn't matter. He's got single coverage out there. Allen is out there, but so is the receiver. Touchdown, NC State. Kelvin Harmon. Wow, Kelvin Harmon just took it away from Rodney Allen. I thought at first that Ryan Finley was going to airmail this pass.
pretty good coverage. And then it was excellent coverage. Harmon just got it. I mean, he just launches this thing, and Harmon out of nowhere just with his burst of speed runs up underneath it. Beautiful throw. And then just a physical finish to the run to get into the end zone. Allen was there, but kind of step for step, just never turned around. And the ball perfectly delivered by Ryan Finley. So the Wolfpack in the lead. Trying to make it a four-point game. The kick by Wise is up and no good. So those kicking woes continue. That could be a big missed extra point. Let's see how, how that, well, we're going to see the touchdown first. Yeah, here's a look at the touchdown, just a fade ball. A nine route on the outside. He sees the man coverage. He says, all right, Kelvin Harmon, I know you're faster than that corner. I'm just going to throw it up and go make a play. That's just kind of hand-to-hand -hand combat out there and made the better man win. And right there, Harmon won. 6'3", 215-pound sophomore from New Jersey. Had 10 catches last week for 114 yards. So he's a go-to guy as well. They've got a bunch of them. Last three drives, the pack has kind of turned it on a little bit here to take the lead. It's been fun. Hey, 44 points, 43 points rather, in the first half. 600 yards combined total offense between both teams. I like it. A lot of fun. Matching wits. You know uh, Chuck Heater, Marshall's defensive coordinator, not happy to give up that late touchdown. Here's the kick that was missed. Oh, wide right. Wide right. I, I, I think that Carson Wise right now may, may be his own worst enemy in his mind because you know, he misses the kick last week, which is a 29-yarder. The first PAT, he bounced in off the left upright, and now... It's almost like when you're, you're golfing, we're all bad golfers, and you try to, to overcompensate, and now he just pushes that one to the right. Well, the hope, they, they were 9 of 17 in field goals last year. Mm -hmm. that's, that's not good. And you've do, you do have a confidence problem with the kicking game, and everybody knows it. So you don't say anything, right? It's like when you're not shooting foul shots well, you've got to get it in your head, and you've got you to gotta turn it around. And look, this is not the NFL. I mean, you can't just cut a guy and go sign somebody else right, and bring right. somebody in. I mean, this is your kicker, so you've got to support him and get through it. And that's, that's the unfortunate thing about it. And, and hopefully Carson Wise, they, they, can, they can get him figured out. Dave Doran said he was very consistent in camp. That's why yep. he got the job. Yep. So he's got the ability. Well, he's a grad transfer. Spent some time at a Division II program. Yeah. Signed originally with Virginia Tech. Yeah, he's, he's from, from Blacksburg. Blacksburg. That's yeah. right, he is. Marshall content to call this one a half. And it's been an entertaining half of football here in Raleigh, North Carolina. As the Wolfpack rallies for a late touchdown to retake the lead over the thundering herd. A delightful evening here in Raleigh, North Carolina. The Wolfpack out of the ACC. The herd out of Conference USA. A big battle in week two. And the pack leads at 23-20 at halftime. We're back after this. Don't forget to go to ESPN.com or the Sports Center Facebook page on Tuesday to give your Capital One fan vote. Welcome back to Carter Finley Stadium. I'm Keith Morehouse with Dustin Fox. Dustin, that was uh, entertaining. Yes, it we was. hope for more of the same in the second half. Bit of a surprise, you know. Mark Marshall mm -hmm. came out here and stood toe for toe with NC State. Uh, pretty balanced uh, offensively for both teams. Pretty even too. Both teams about 300 yards of total offense. So we take a look at the first half highlights and Chase Litton. Uh, Teamed up with Tyree Brady a bunch of times and got their offense on track. It was the Litton to Brady show for the entire first half for this Marshall offense. I was very impressed with Litton's uh, ability to stay poised against a very stout NC State defense. But you knew it was only a matter of time before NC State would come back. And, and this was really what took over. Savon Lewis here Savon breaks Lewis, free. Yeah. And, and, and then they got the answer back from, from Bra uh, Brady and Litton again. Yeah, Brady, just a little comeback at 10 yards and a missed tackle on the outside, and all of a sudden Brady's off to the races for a 75-yard touchdown. And then some trickeration. This was pretty to watch. Yeah, this is sweet, a little double flea flicker throwback to Jalen Samuels, senior leader. To Gets the to the end zone. Yeah. And then right before the half, they kept coming. 
This is a big score, a great momentum builder for NC State. Yeah, no doubt. With just 16 seconds on the clock, Kelvin Harmon finds the end zone. And here we sit, 23-20 at the half. We're ready for the second half. Back after this. Let's take a look at today's campus moment brought to you by Dr. Pepper. Great atmosphere here at Carter Finley Stadium. They've got the fans going. Both offenses putting on a show out there. Dustin. Just an amazing atmosphere for college football. Had a chance to play here back in 2004 against Phillip Rivers. My first time back, and it is uh, just as awesome as I remember. Remember, North Carolina State won the opening toss and deferred. So they will get the football. Hines with it. Hines finds a little hole. Kicks it outside to the 31-yard line where the Wolfpack offense is suddenly resurgent. North Carolina State Wolfpack offense takes over. Well, they're going to need it here in the second half, and I would be uh, very curious to hear what Dave Doran had to say to his guys at halftime to sort of wake them up. I know they, they did you know, take the lead there at the end of the first half, but they can't be happy with the way that they performed, especially on the defensive side of the ball. Too many big plays. And when you come off a loss last week, which was deflating, let's be honest, yeah. you, you can't wait around and start to play, and I'm sure that's what his message was. Oh, no question. You know, you, you can't be coming out flat at home. Regardless of who you're playing, you've got to have an attitude and intensity every single time to, to bring it, no matter who you're playing. Finley, quick little look out there, and that is swallowed up quickly. Chase Hancock came from his linebacking position and went over and got him. You got to wrap him up too. You know those guys that get away. <laughs> no doubt. You have to be sure in your tackling technique. Loss of three yards, second and thirteen for the pack. There's the handoff. Nothing doing over there. Blake Keller and company arrive, and they lose a couple more yards. Marshall's defense. Yeah, big answer. And really, this stop was all led by Blake Keller, the defensive end. Who's a transfer from UCF, does a great job holding the point of attack, forcing everything back inside. And now NC State facing a very, very difficult third and 15. See if Chuck Heater dials up any heat or goes with the three man rush. He's going with the standard three man rush, and Finley throws for his man, knocked away. Crowd wanted the flag, and here it comes. Well, I knew it was coming, it was just a little bit late. There was some, some pass interference on Marshall. I believe that's going to be the call. Very late flag. I was looking for it. Well, what frustrates you is if you're a defensive backs coach, you, you can make the tackle. Pass interference. Pass interference, defense. Ball we placed at the spot of the foul, first down. It's only going to be about a seven-yard penalty. Yeah, because so you end the drive if yeah. you just don't do that. You're saying let him make the catch, tackle him right there. Well, and then, you, yeah, you're, yeah, you're right. I mean, I know, but, I know you never let but, him make the catch. But but in the moment, it's very yeah, difficult right. to, to think sorry. split second. Oh, oh, my gosh, just let him make this catch. <laughs> I'm glad you brought some defensive backfield <laughs> mentality to the booth. I like that. We're going to keep it on the ground with Gillespie, who gains about three yards out to the 35-yard line. Let's, let's keep that play in our Rolodex and see yeah. if, that, if that has a – big factor here on this drive yeah I mean you third and 15 you, you give him a free first down Finley checking the sideline not changing the play second and seven there's Gillespie again following his big tackle he breaks free out to the midfield stripe where Malik Gant knocked him out of bounds. Reggie Gillespie, the second, showing his stuff. 13-yard, 15-yard gain, rather. What's the block on the right side? Tony Adams and Prescott. Good block there from the wide receiver, Kelvin Harmon. And then he just, he pushes Tony Adams. He kind of gives him a push on the behind to, to say, get out of my way, and I'm going to just run it up through there for an extra 10 yards. Adams, the ACC Offensive Lineman of the Week. 35 career starts. Finley looks over the defense. Got plenty of time to throw it. Look for his receiver. Wow. Did he catch it? He did. 
goodness gracious, what a grab. Jalen Samuels somehow played volleyball with that thing and brought it down. <laughs> this is crazy. How Dusty. about this concentration? He, he, he must have tipped this three different times to himself. There's once, twice, catches it on the wow. third time. Wow. 23-yard gain. Marshall's defense answers that time as they break through the offensive line. Good stop there on defense, but this catch this is tremendous. I love how he tries to go up and high point it, which is what you're taught as a wide receiver, and then he never gives up on the pass. That's terrific, man. That is, that is Jalen Samuels in a nutshell. Yeah, that's a Sports Center top ten nominee. I, I would say. I would say. Loss of four yards as Marquise Couch comes in and makes a stop for the Thundering Herd. Finley now wants to throw it again. Going to the other side. Finds his receiver. Still on his feet, driving to the first down marker. That is just some serious second effort from Kelvin Harmon. I mean, he's going to be stopped well short of the first down. There are three defenders that come in and try and bring him down, and he just drags them. So many weapons. We talked about he had the touchdown pass, 14-yard gain there, first now and 10 from the 17-yard line. How about the tempo? Still wants to keep it in the air, and he goes to Lewis. Takes it inside Marshall's 10-yard line. What do you think, partner, that pass interference looming big uh, right now? Uh, we were talking about it. I, I think we will go back and look at that play again, nine yards. So it's second and one. Hines back in as the tailback. Samuel's in motion. Hines has it left side. Closes it down to the 6-5 yard line. Where that'll be a first down and goal. You know, here's what's interesting now is, is a big, big play coming up here. You think they would even consider kicking a field goal if it got to that point inside the five oh, yard I'd line? Say not now, right. I, I, first and goal. Yeah, I mean, you don't want to compound you got the four, problems you got of four, confidence. Four plays to get six yards. Harmon out wide. Lewis to the near side. There's a quick run, and Marshall's defense is there. There's Malik Gant again. Keith, there was some serious penetration from Ty Tyler, number 17, from Marshall. He was in the backfield. Now he's, he's a defensive end, but they also will put move him around to play some three technique on the inside. And, and right here, I think he's down as a three technique. Yep, see him with his four, uh, two hands on the ground. Penetration into the backfield and allows his other defenders his teammates to corral and make the tackle. Terrific job by Marshall's defense. Naheem Hines goes in motion. He can be a weapon out there. The give is inside to Harmon, who gets down to the two-yard line before he's brought down. And if you're Eli Drinkowitz, I think you got two plays to get two yards. Yeah. Marshall changes personnel right now. You want to get in that thick and run. Goal line set, heavy package. Gillespie's going to be your tailback. Harmon is the lone wide receiver. Yeah, Cole Cook in the backfield. And they take it up in there. They do not get in. Marshall's defense holds. Keller was there. Frankie Fernandez. I think will be credited with the solo stop. The middle linebacker, the Mike Backer right here. Fernandez comes up and pow, right at the goal line to stop Gillespie from getting in the end zone. So here we go. Fourth and one. Fourth and goal, rather. No decision. No, you're just going to go. Easy call. Ryan Finley wants uh, all, all the faithful here at Carter Finley to give him a little bit of silence. Two back set. It's the pitch outside. Gillespie, all he had to do was beat the defensive end, and he does to the end zone.
Rarely do you see the speed option used these days, but they're going to go to the backside. Quick speed option. You're going to read the defensive end, Blake Keller. He takes the quarterback. There's no chance he's going to be able to get there with the speed of Reggie Gillespie taking it in for six. And the Wolfpack capitalizes on that aforementioned pass interference call and turns it into a touchdown. The extra point. This one is up and through. Carson Wise connects. Well, this was led by Jalen Samuels. Terrific catch. And then you're going to see Gillespie on the speed option, taking it all the way to the house. Wolfpack on top, 30 to 20. And the North Carolina State Wolfpack uh, has turned up the heat on offense, Dustin. They've uh, been really effective the last four drives. They have turned up the heat on Chuck Heater and that Marshall defense. There's a little play on words. I like that. Yeah, you like that? NC State's offense. There you go. 27 points, 300 total yards. Really, really important series here yeah. for, for Marshall, Huge. don't you think? Biggest of the game, no doubt. Keon Davis from his five-yard line. Davis gets a couple good blocks. Davis bust free. Davis looking for the end zone. Touchdown, but there's a flag. Wow. That's crazy. Wow, what an amazing return. This is probably coming back. Holding. Receiving team number one. Ten-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. Willie Johnson. Well, that's a killer. Davis realizes it. Well, there's a hold right there. Right there. <laughs> there are two, on two yeah, Marshall. A couple of them, right? Return men. But just tremendous speed from, from Keon. That would have been his third touchdown yeah. return in two weeks. Doc Holliday said he has a, several kickoff return options, but he trusts <laughs> Davis the most, and it's uh, been borne out here the first couple of games. Yeah, that's that's a huge break for, for NC State. Now that's two penalties. Yeah. Yeah, that's, we're talking about 14 points potentially yeah. because the pass interference penalty keeps the drive alive for NC State to go down and score that last touchdown. And now another touchdown comes off the board because of that holding penalty. Let's we'll see if the herd can get their offense back in here. They're going to run it. Defense comes up strong there. Big hit. It's a big hit from Tim Kid Glass, who's getting the start at free safety this week because the injury to Dexter Wright. Arius Moore was there as well, the linebacker. Tim Kid Glass, just a sophomore. They like him. They gave him two yards on first down. Litton surveying the defense. Throws to Juracek. Juracek busts out over the 27-yard line to move the chains. Yeah, you're in good hands with Juracek. That's kind of the safety security blanket for Chase Litton. Sits down right beyond the sticks. Such a reliable guy. Yes, he is. Great hands. Can run after the catch. Leader of this team as well. First down for the herd, 27 yard line, 28 rather. Keep it on the ground into that stiff defense and not much going on there. Fernandez comes up from his middle linebacker position to make the stop. Chubb was there as well, no surprise. They gave him two yards on first down. Litton does a little stretch option play outside. Picks up pretty good yardage. Trey Rodriguez, two yards shy of a first down. Big third down here for the herd. And no doubt the biggest drive of the game, they need to answer. They've got to respond to NC State's opening punch here. And you see the guys on defense, they understand Decision time, though, third and three. I mean, do you decide to run at this 
defensive front. I might try to find number 85 if you could. Or number eight. They fake the run. They roll him out. Oh, nice pass by Litton going to his left. Keeping his composure because the blitz or the rush rather was coming. I love how they move the pocket. Watch how he kind of just flips it around. Gets outside. There's nobody there. I mean, it's just a easy pitch and catch for the first down to Marcel Williams. Got a man down for North Carolina State at the 45-yard line. He's back up. Looks like the middle linebacker, Jared Fernandez. Look at that, 222 tackles for his career. He had nine last week. 31 starts. I'm not sure what Coach Holiday's upset about. Probably the last few penalties. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's her fault, right? Yeah. Well, he thinks it is. Well, you want to blame somebody, right? <laughs> He's really, really fired up. Chase Litton, in a big time atmosphere against mm -hmm. a big time Power Five team, has acquitted himself very nicely tonight. And he'd love nothing better than to take it down and answer that score by NC State. First and ten for the herd. There's the give to Keon Davis. Got one block, but not two. And now there's a flag at the 36-yard line. That one never did develop. Now you're going to have a hold. This thing is coming back. Holding. Offense, number 67. Ten-yard penalty on the previous spot. Remains first down. He got to be banging his head against the headset with these penalties, Dustin. It's been killing him so far. Take a look at the top of your screen. Sandy Jean Felix, he just, oh, yeah. he, look at the, just grabs hold of that jersey, turns to the body. That's an easy call. James Smith Williams was bearing down on Litton, and so he had to hold on. First and 20 for Marshall. Litton a quick drop. Connection is made. Catch by Willie Johnson. Jay Flynn's pass to complete the number one, Willie Johnson. Puts that about by number 30, James. Look at Valdez. the penalties. NC State hasn't been penalized at all, and the six that Marshall have Second committed have been just costly. Maybe that's what Coach Holiday was saying. Well, yeah, I think so. Six to nothing, right? We're talking points. I mean, the last drive, that's a touchdown. He, he took a touchdown off the board because of the, the holding penalty. And clearly, they're the right calls. Oh, yeah. And State has, you know, they, they played a very clean game. Fakes the run. Now he rolls to the right side. Looks for Brady. Did he make the grab on the sideline? He does. He's been phenomenal tonight. This is a sail route combination where Litton has two options. He could find number nine, Marcel Williams, coming across short like he did the last time for the first down. But because the corner bites up, wow. he decides to try and fit it in the window to Brady, and he does a tremendous job. That is just a great throw from Chase Litton. Brady now over the 200-yard mark in receiving. Heard in NC State territory now. Quick look to Brady again. Met there rather quickly by the secondary. Nick McLeod was there. With help from Tim Kidd Glass. Gain of about five yards. That's Brady's eighth catch for 215 yards. That's big, that's big time. That's a night's work. Oh my goodness. Second and five, Chase Litt. Rodriguez is the tailback as Litton wants to change things up. Crowd getting into it now. Rodriguez decides to kick it outside. Can he get out there? Makes something out of nothing and gets a 
within a yard of the first down marker. Well, you can see the speed of Jarius Moorhead, the strong safety. Rodriguez bounces his outside, and he thinks he's going to be able to get the corner. And in just in like two seconds, Jarius Moorhead comes in and makes him cut it back inside to the rest of the NC State defense. Big third down coming up here, third and about one. Two back set for Litton. Anthony Anderson, Keon Davis are with him. Juracek is in the slot. Anderson gets it. First down yardage down to the 29-yard line. The big fella picks up the first down. Number 21, Anthony Anderson is the ball carrier. 6'2", 240-pounder. That's who you want to give it to in short yardage situations. Number 30, James Valdez on the tackle. Three-yard game, first and 10, 29-yard line. New set of downs for the herd from the 29-yard line. Keith Morehouse, Dustin Fox with you from a beautiful night for football in Raleigh, North Carolina. Lip on the out route to Johnson. I, I asked uh, Coach Bill Legg this week, I said, Coach, what is the greatest strength of Chase Litton? And his first answer was his arm. I said, what do you mean by that? He said he can make all the throws. At his size, at six foot six, 232 pounds, he put on some weight this offseason. He's got a big arm. And you saw it right there. I mean, that's a timing route. That the football's out before the, the receiver even breaks out of his route. I'm very impressed with Chase, Chase Litton's poise and his arm strength tonight. Seems to have recommitted himself to the game. Hurd's going to kick it outside. There's Davis back inside. There's a late hit, I believe, on Marshall. I, I, if I saw it right, looked like it might have been on Levi Brown. We'll check it out, but it was a hit after the play had been whistled dead. And if that's the case, it'd be another killer penalty for hmm. Marshall. After the play, personal foul, offense. Number 61, 15 yards from the end of the run. Since the offense made the line to gain, it'll be first down. That's that's gonna just, go on, that Le just kills you. Yeah, Levi Brown, the Richard sophomore center. You just can't do that. Uh, it just it takes so, you out of your rhythm and puts you behind the chains. And Doc's wanting somebody to answer him about something. <laughs> Coach Holiday. Working uphill on this drive. But Brown should know better. They fake the give to Davis. Over the top, there's Brady. Just over his outstretched arms. Boy, Nick McLeod is very, very lucky that this was not a pass interference flag because he turned the body of, Ty of Tyree Brady. Yeah, Brady's... Probably still not going to catch it, but watch at the end. Watch McLeod turn the body of Brady. He kind of grabs it right there. Yeah. See, that's, that yeah. could have been called. So second down, 10 to go for the herd. Juracek goes in motion. There's the quick out to Keon Davis, who has to shake a defender, and he did so nicely. And he is, Woo. wow. Who delivered the hit there? I'm not sure if it was on the offense. I think Davis got the better of that one. Number 24, Keon Davis. I think sometimes you can have both guys come in and deliver a blow. And, and right here, watch Davis, number 24. Pow. Yeah, I think Davis got the better of that one. That was Nick McLeod again coming back from his corner spot. Made a nice move to get away from Kentavious Street. And after all that, though, he only got three yards. But better than uh, the negative yardage he was looking at. Third and seven for the herd. We're going to let this go to the fourth quarter. That is the end of the third quarter. And a good one it has been here at Carter Finley Stadium. The Wolfpack up by 10. The herd driving, hoping to have an answer. Back to this. You're watching the ACC on ESPN. 
15 more minutes of football, partner. You ready? I know Doc Holliday's ready. Third and of course seven I'm ready. For the Thundering Herd. I knew you were. Litton trying to keep the drive alive. Time he out. has to call a timeout. Had to be sure on third down and wanted to make sure that he got this all right. Timeout. Marshall. It is there first. So Chase Litton and Doc Holliday. Bill Lang will talk it over. State by 10. Third and seven for the herd, and Litton overshoots his wide receiver, Willie Johnson. I was wondering if they may go for it, but Vedvik's been pretty effective, so they're going to go for the field goal. And it's an important field goal because you get it back to a one-score game. Just a little bit off there for Chase Litton. Who's had a really nice night. Looks like he had a conversation with Johnson to, yeah. to kind of figure out where they weren't on the same page. Vedvik now from 46 yards away. Snap was low. He got it up. But he missed it left. Can't really put that on him. That snap was low. There's Coach Holiday talking to his long snapper, Matt Beardall. It's funny how that just disrupts the timing of everything, Dustin, on special teams, you know? Yeah, no doubt. And that drive was 16 plays? Yeah, and you come away with nothing, right? S 16 plays, 56 yards, and, and you don't get points. I mean, that is, that's a killer. They did what they wanted to do, yeah, take did. it back down, just yeah. didn't finish. So now they got to deal with that potent NC State offense again. There's the carry inside. Good herd response there. Hines ran it up in there, but Dobson was there. And Malik Gant is also, also on the tackle. Look at Ryan Finley, what he's done. First four drives of the game, a little bit slow. And then things sort of picked up there. 16 for 18, 230 yards and three touchdowns. I'd say he woke up. Oh, he looked outside, then went inside. Oh, Marshall. Brandon Drayton jumped the route. Thought he had it. And Locklear never really turned around in time. And you take a, this is a double move. They're trying to hit that wheel route. I think he may have got a fingertip on Maybe it. Maybe touched it, yeah. Locklear was open. So it's third and eight. This could be a quick three and out for Marshall. Now he wants to throw. He's got a good pocket. Delivers a strike. And Riley's got it. And he's got a blocker. Riley dragged down to the 23-yard line. I think Riley would have taken this the distance had his had his lead blocker come back and realize that the Marshall defender, number six, Locklear, like Locklear keeps running. Yeah. You gotta go back and get the Marshall defender who's coming in closest. That's number 29. Malik Gant. Malik Gant, the safety. So he's been pretty good on defense. There's a nice run on first down. Marshall trying to strip the ball from Gillespie. Gillespie on the carry. But he picks up five yards. I think Locklear maybe telling his buddy, hey, we got to get you on the speed workout this summer. I thought you were going to catch up to me. <laughs> well, they have certainly picked up the pace on offense. Yes, they have. Riley, Locklear, and Emizi are the wideouts. Allen Cook in the slot. They give it to Gillespie again. He's met right at the line of scrimmage and held on. Again, I've been very impressed with the Marshall defensive line. Those front four have done a great job penetrating against the run. There's Hernandez, the Mike backer. Yeah, they averaged 264 pounds across the defensive front and 310 for NC State's offensive line. So they've, they've held up well, as you mentioned. They're doing a very good job. 
Marshall's defense. Third and four now. Finley looks the other way. Now he throws it to his man right out of the back. That's Samuels, who's going to be a little bit short. No, I'm sorry. That was Hines. I thought Hines was going to get the first down, but a really big hit coming in late. And he'll be about a yard short. They're going to so go for it, right? Decision time, I think you have to. Fourth down and one from the 15 yard I don't, line. I don't get the sense that Dave Doran has a ton of confidence in Carson Wise right now. Well, he knows, you know, if they can finish this thing off and get this and, and get a touchdown, that they've got some breathing room. So we'll see what happens on fourth down. Finley saying, hurry, he's got five seconds on the play clock. Quarterback sneak it. That's what I would do. Dave Doran, I believe, ran halfway down the field to get a timeout. The quarterback sneak would have worked. Prior to the snap, timeout, NC State. It is their first. Fourth down and one to go when we come back. The NC State offense trying to stay on the field. Steve Perry reverberating through the stadium, and NC State hoping the uh, journey continues, if you will, Dustin. They've got fourth and a yard to go. Yeah, big play here for this NC State offense. They, they would have picked up the first down had Finley just quarterback snuck it on the, the last one, but here we go. Lewis in motion. Gillespie is the tailback. He tries to bust it up in there, but I don't know. It looks like it may be a little bit short from this angle. Reggie Gillespie is the ball carrier. He's going to be stopped. And that's a big hold for Marshall if that is the way they see it. And I believe they did stop him. You know, I just don't understand why when you have a quarterback who's six foot four, 215 pounds, why you don't just quarterback sneak it. You fall forward for the first down. Well, then when you call the timeout, you give the team a little time to, to collect themselves, rest a little bit on defense, and then go out and see what the formation is. I, I, I agree. Hey, I think that helter-skelter kind of thing on fourth is yeah, better. Yeah, a lot of credit to Marshall for getting the stop. But I, ju I just question the call when you have had Marshall defenders in the backfield all day. That's exactly what Doc Holliday's team needs here with 11.56 to go. Down 10 to the Wolfpack. Look at the penetration. That's 17 Ty Tyler, Tyler back there in Blake, Blake Keller. Keller. Yeah, yeah, 44. First and 10 for the herd. They give it to Davis. Davis gets a couple of yards. Number 24, Keon Davis. Maybe give him three. James Smith Williams on the stop for the Wolfpack. Three yard gain, second down and seven to the 19 yard line. Davis has gotten considerably more work as a tailback than he did a week ago, sharing time with Rodriguez. Now he goes in motion. And that's Anthony Anderson. Number 21, Anthony Anderson is the ball carrier. Four yards on second down. Surprise down 10. Coming out here very Little conservative. I think so. I mean, very manageable third and three here, but you know, they're very content to run the football. I bet they don't run it here. A quick delivery, quick slant, and guess who? Tyree Brady, who, by the way, has set a new Carter Jay Finley Blue's Stadium record for eight, most Tyree yards Brady. by an opposing team as a wide receiver. That was 217 prior to that catch. And he's been the go-to guy all night long for Chase Litton. I would just keep looking for number eight. I don't care who he's matched up against on the outside. Tyree Brady is just winning the one-on-one -on -one matchups all night. Heard at the 30-yard line. Keon Davis stood up there. Not much doing with that Number stout defense. Jared Fernandez, the middle linebacker, stopped him. Again, at two yards. Mm -hmm. Two yard gain, second down and eight from the 32 yard line. Again, look at the bottom of the screen. Tyree Brady. The clouds on him. Now they roll the pocket again. Lit. Over the middle, but he throws behind his receiver. He was open. Good play by McLeod. That was Brady. 
And he followed uh, Tyree Brady halfway across yeah, the field. It was, it was interesting what NC State decided to do defensively on that play. They bring over a backer who kind of mirrors Brady on the inside, almost like they're bracketing him like a double coverage. And then the linebacker pulls off. Litton sees that. He delivers the football. It was a catchable ball, but a good play by number 21, Nick McLeod. Brady in pretty heady company with the school record of 288 yards receiving by a guy you might have heard of, Randy Moss. Third and eight. Litton flushed out. Now he's Chuck. in big trouble in the first sack of the game. And look who's in there. Bradley Chubb doing a little celebratory dance. And the Wolfpack defense needed that stop, stop as much as Marshall's offense needed to keep that drive going. Watch Chubb come on the inside. He gets right in there. Litton tries to get outside the pocket. He sees another defender coming. Roseboro on the outside was, was coming as well. And there's just nowhere for Chase Litton to go. So Vedvik in the punt. Naheem Hines stands at his 40-yard line. So they look to be getting some pretty good field position. Kind of a low kick, and actually Locklear takes it. Up at the 44-yard line where the Wolfpack will take over. NC State leads it by 10 here at Raleigh. Take over, first 10 at the 44-yard line. 9.05 to go here in Raleigh. The Wolfpack leads it 30-20 to 20 over the Thundering Herd, first and 10. For Ryan Finley, they start at their 43-yard line. There's another carry, and the herd's there. And looks like a flag is down as well. Number 25, Reggie Gillespie is the ball carrier. Flag down the play. Holding. Holding. Offense, number 65. 10-yard penalty. First down. Well, we talk a lot about Ryan Finley. And where he comes from, he is a graduate transfer from Boise State. Comes over with Eli Drinkowitz, who was a coach at Boise State as well. Had a chance to coach Ryan Finley. He's now been the offensive coordinator for two seasons. And they really feel like they're on the same page now, especially in year two of their system. Didn't he have to come down from the box last week because the headsets were out? And he didn't like it. He doesn't like it down he, he there. He likes to be away from it because he gets so jacked up. Finley going up top finds his receiver Harmon almost picks up the first down a gain of 19 yards Kelvin Harmon has been stellar himself today while we talk about Tyree Brady that's going to be his 8th catch Kelvin Harmon goes over 100 yards on the day yeah Brady's had a nice day real nice day Harmon's quietly having himself a day as well bunch of good size with these wide outs too 6-3 Go up and get it. Second down a yard to go. Quick look out there to Harmon again. Jalen McClain's sap is there, and then he gets some company. But he gets the first down, and they move the sticks. Three, Kelvin Harmon. Three-yard gain, and another You get the feeling that Dave Doran's saying, all right, let's go down and finish this thing, right? With they can hold the ball and... Go down here and score. Put a lot of pressure on Marshall's offense. Well, it puts you up 17 points with seven and change to go. Depending on how quickly you score, it would be uh, a pretty incredible feat if Marshall could come back. But it's not over yet. Marshall could come up with a stop here. Well, their defense has... Uh, they played very well. I think they've acquitted themselves very well against a power five offensive line. There's the give to Hines. And the going is tough again. The inside defense has Number been stout. Chase Hancock on the stop. Brought Former walk-on. Chase Hancock. Two-yard gain. Second down and eight from the 42-yard line. They gave him two, so it's second and eight. As they're content, though, to run the ball and, and run a little clock here. Mm -hmm. The problem with running the football here is, is that yeah, you take some clock off, but Marshall's pretty pretty good <laughs> against yeah. the run. So you're not guaranteeing yourself to move the chains. This time they throw it out on the perimeter and nothing doing there either. How about that? Look at the stop out there on Marshall's defense by number 21, Artis Johnson, the linebacker. Mm -hmm. Great job. 
from Johnson. He spies on the outside, gets off a block. That's really difficult. Jalen Samuels is doing a good job trying to stock block there. And Johnson just gets off it. Been impressed with their yeah. ability to run side to side as well. A lot of Dustin. speed on that defense. Third and 13 for the Wolfpack. Ryan Finley. Been able to convert some big plays here in the last five or six drives. Wants another one here. This time they let the screen pass go. And look who's got it. Hines breaks free, but he'll be short of the first down. That was a setup screen. And there's a man down as the training staff rushing over to midfield. They don't need any more injuries. They've had their share already. So while they attend to the injured player, we'll take a break. The Wolfpack leads it by 10 in Raleigh. Looks like Dave Doran has made his decision to kick it away. Probably a smart decision, up 10, and you're going to likely pin Marshall deep and put it on your defense. A.J. Cole back to punt. Trey Rodriguez stands at his 10-yard line. Angling for the corner. And that might be nice. And they rule it a touchback. Look who's down there. Himes out there. Playing everywhere. Himes is a gunner. You know, Nick, Nick Chubb and this defensive front, this defense, they have just gotten better and better every single season, and partly because guys like Chubb, Tavia Street, B.J. Hill, Justin Jones, all seniors across that defensive line. Yeah, part of the reason they're picked fourth in the Atlantic Division behind some pretty good teams, Florida State, Clemson, Louisville. <laughs> yeah. Chase Litton and the Hurt offense taking over 5.42 to go. They've got a 10-point deficit to try to carve into. Litton wants to throw it. Now he's got to get out of there. Throws it over in the direction of Juracek. There's a flag down at the 13-yard line. I thought there was a false start prior to the play. But I'm not sure that this, this could be a hold. Holding. Offense, number 67. 10-yard penalty remains first down. Yeah, those penalties have really hurt Marshall tonight. Mm -hmm. That'll be a point of contention for Doc Holliday when they have those meetings. You're down 10 and you just put yourself 20 yards behind the sticks. And this just allows you, if you're Coach Huxtable, to just pin your ears back. There's a quick pass to Willie Johnson, who's got some speed, and he got outside. That was a nice move. Got 18 yards on that. That's actually Brady. I'm sorry. Brady's As he just, continues to impress. He's just stacking up the numbers here, racking them up on the outside. Way too much cushion. And Brady is going to say, that's fine. I'll take that all day. He understands the leverage. Gets McLeod inside. Breaks back outside. Terrific move. And then you see the speed. Well, you're right about your reference to Coach Legg. He, he gets, gets that ball out quickly. Oh, how about, how about Bradley Chubb? Trey Rodriguez said, I'm not him again, right? He gets shot out of a cannon here. He's in the backfield, I think, before Litton even handed the football off. Look at number nine. Knife's in here. He's just got a motor that does not stop. Senior from Marietta, Georgia. And there's the connection from Litton to Johnson, first down. Pass is complete to number one, Willie Johnson. That's a fourth tackle for a loss tonight by Chubb. There's another North Carolina hmm. State Wolfpack defender down. And we're going to take a break here as they uh, settle in and see if they can help this young man. 30 to 20, the pack leads. Welcome back. That was defensive back James Valdez, who uh, came off the field under his own power, which is always good to see. Marshall now, first and 10 from the 37 yard line. Mm -hmm. 
Litton looks to Eurotech. There's another flag. Personal foul. Hands to the face. Offense, number 74. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. First down. That's A.J. Addison. That is Marshall's ninth penalty, and Doc Holliday incensed. The Wolfpack just one penalty, and, and Doc thinks that uh, is a discrepancy he needs to tell somebody about. And yeah, nine for penalty, 86 down, yards. For the and they've been line. they've been they've been killer penalties too. Some of them can get by with, but personal fouls. That interference call on third yeah. down. Secondary backs off just a little bit. Litton wants to throw. Inside screen to Rodriguez. Fumbles it. And that might be North Carolina State football. Pass is completed to number five, Trey Rodriguez. Fumble on the play. And it is. <laughs> you appreciate Rodriguez trying to make a move here. You do. He gets stripped. I, I thought he was going to ma make the defender here. Jared Fernandez missed, but Fernandez comes in there. He misses the tackle, but he ends up getting a paw on the football and knocks it out. And then a host of Wolfpack defenders dive in there, and they come up with the recovery. So Marshall goes backwards with the penalty, and then they turn the football over to sort of bail out this NC State defense. It had been a turnover-free game. Yes, it has. Prior to that. Recovery there made by Justin Jones, the defensive tackle. Coach Holliday still not finished. Marshall defense back out on the field, NC State. Ryan Finley hoping to put this one away. They're going to keep it on the ground to Gillespie. He gets a big hole, runs over a defender. Gillespie to the end zone. Touchdown, Wolfpack. This is a big boy run for Gillespie. Watch as he breaks through the line of scrimmage. He's wide, scot free through the line of scrimmage, and then just breaks a tackle. Safety comes in there and just can't make the tackle. 5'11, 225 pounds. He's a load. Second yes, he leading is. rusher on the team last year, so he knows he can get the job done. That was a powerful burst up the middle, and that gives the Wolfpack. A little breathing room here. Carson Wise on for the point after. And just like that, the Wolfpack extending its lead to 17. Boy, you had a penalty, then you have a fumble, and all of a sudden the game turns just that quickly, Dustin. Yeah, one play. And here just a powerful run from Reggie Gillespie up the middle. He's not even touched until the second level. And you wonder if you're on the hurt sideline and you see the fumble by Rodriguez. Rodriguez. Yeah, and, and you, you know you have to go on the field down 10 points. How devastating that was and deflating yeah, the because turnover. You've, you've yeah. gone punch to punch with him for the most part. No question. And that offensive line, we talked about him. You know, this score, it's 17 points now. You know, Marshall's not done. But they deserve a ton of credit because they played for the most part of this game right toe to toe with NC State. And move the ball on what many oh, consider man. one of the top five defensive lines in the country, hands down. Keith, they've averaged seven yards a play against a very stout NC State defense. So I think a lot to build off of if you're Doc Holliday when you go back and watch this tape. And you're going to be kicking yourself for a couple uh, penalties that really killed the game. There's a short kick. They're not kicking to Keon Davis this time. They kicked to uh, the up man who's upended very quickly. Mm -hmm. Cody Mitchell, backup tight end. And there's another flag. Flag down on the play. These are Conference USA officials, by the way. 
Why were, were those uh, some speculating home cooking? No, no. Just putting the facts <laughs> out there. <laughs> I'm with After you. the play, personal foul, personal foul. Kicking, team, kicking team number three. Number three. 15 yards will be added to the end of the run. First down. All right, we talked about Bradley Chubb and his motor. Where do we start? I mean, he's been everywhere. Take it away. Just look at number nine in the backfield, penetrating, tackles for loss. They try to double team him, can't do it. He's everywhere. He's phenomenal. And then, of course, he gets his first sack of the game right there in the fourth quarter. A big time for career sacks. I mean, he's, he just keeps going. 12th in school history with 34 tackles for loss coming into this ball game. All right, tackle a couple more on. Heard going to keep it on the ground. Keon Davis has some space over the right side, down inside the 40. Marshall's offense, though, as you mentioned, considerably mm -hmm. more efficient than it was last week against Miami against a better defense, you have to say. But time winding down in the herd with a 17-point deficit. Davis again. Nope. Andreas Bryant on the stop. Think of your coach Huxtable here, defensive coordinator for NC State. Important to finish the game. Right. You know, you, you've allowed Marshall to, to go up and down the field on you all day. You want to you feel good about yourself after the game is over. This is an this is important, important drive here. No gain on first down. They fake it now. Litton just throws it to no one in particular. You know, earlier this week, B.J. Hill, number 98, defensive tackle. They, all, all, all through camp, Dave Doran stressed, hey, 1-0, let's go 1-0 this week. And after that loss to South Carolina, lots of heads down. The fan base was was uh, a little down in the dumps. And B.J. Hill sent a text to every player on the team saying, 1-0 this week. Let's do it. That's a leader for you. And that's one of those seniors on that defensive line along with Chubb. Quick pass delivered. Inside to High League Foster, who couldn't hang on. It's fourth and ten, and no reason not to go for it here. Down 17. High League Foster should have caught that pass. That was right there. That's not on Litton, that's for sure. And hit him in a bad spot. His hands, right? Yep. Actually let it come to his body, didn't he? Yeah. Fourth and ten for the herd. And they boisterous NC State crowd getting loud. Litton delivers a strike. Marcel Williams pulled down, and that'll be a horse collar, I believe. I'll tack that on at the end of the. Hey, give a lot of credit. Marshall is fighting to the very end here. Personal foul, horse collar tower. Defense, number 31. The penalty will be enforced. Half the distance to the goal, first down. Well, they come in as a, what, 25-point underdog, and they've really fought the good fight. No question. And like you said, you wanted NC State to finish. You know, mm -hmm. Bill Legg and his offense says, yep. you know, go down here and see if you can punch one in. Clock running at 226. Litton fakes the give to Davis. <laughs> the NC State defense was looking for that one. Darius Mora, if he could just get another inch or two on a vertical here, may have an interception. He goes up with two oh. hands, just gets a couple fingertips on it. Darius Moore, they say one of the smartest players on that defense. Second goal from the seven for Chase Litton. Pitches it out to Davis. And Davis not going to have a lot going on over there. That was well defended. Mm -hmm. Fernandez comes over from his middle linebacker position. Makes the stop. And 
Fernandez does a good job and running sideline to sideline. Tough to outflank that defense with all that speed. Lots of experience too. Yeah. No substitute for experience as they put the big fella back in. Nice. On third down and goal from the nine. They roll the pocket again. Litton finds Brady and he's got six red jerseys to cover him up at the three yard line. But it was always going to be two plays if they didn't get it on third down. Doc will call timeout here and draw up his best play. Fourth and goal. Well, partner, this has been a good one. Timeout. Yeah, it has been. Marshall, it is their second. It will be 30 seconds. Please reset the game clock to one minute, 42 seconds. Thank you. Well, Tyree Brady, if you haven't heard his name, you probably will after tonight. Amazing performance by him throughout this game. I mean, he, he has been instant offense for the Marshall Thundering Herd. Chase Litton has targeted him tonight 16 times. He has 11 catches for 248 yards. That his lone touchdown of 75 yards. What more can you say about the transfer from the, the University of Miami? Dustin, they knew he was going to be good. They didn't know he'd be this good this quickly. I mean, we're two games into the season here, right? And yeah. he has certainly made an impact. Look at that. 40 yards off the school record held by Randy Moss. And he has been electric. He gives them a, a threat they didn't have a year yeah. ago. Just amazing performance. He's got a lot of NFL scouts, NFL eyes on him. And tonight we'll certainly catch a lot more eyes because this is obviously a terrific defense and he has torched them. Chase Lip, fourth and goal from the three yard line. Fakes to Davis and he just threw it into the end zone. And he got pressure. Mm -hmm. Guess who? Arius Moore, the captain. Coach Huxtable said one of the smartest players I've ever coached. Very versatile linebacker. He almost got one on first down. Well, he ends up with a big one on fourth down. Wolfpack, 37, or 20. Chase Litt. Nothing to hang your head no, he's about tonight. Well. You've had a terrific performance. And he has matched numbers with a pretty good quarterback on the other side, Ryan Finley. These guys have been tremendous as advertised. Yeah, there's no question. I, I think that NC State may have, I don't want to say overlooked Marshall, but yeah. very surprised by the amount of talent that it's. I mean, listen, this team won three games last year. Right, right. Now, they in the past, they've gone in and, and, and been – you know, tremendous 10-win seasons, but last year they didn't. So you can understand why they may have thought, hey, you know, but you can't just roll out your helmet no. and, and, against anybody. You know? And I don't, I don't think they did. I do think they woke up, and, and they, there was a sense of urgency about how they were playing. I do believe that. But Marshall came in thinking, hey, we can play with the big boys, and they've done very well tonight. Think about this. I mean, it, it, the Keon Davis touchdown return that was called back, had that stood – you're looking at a 30-27 game, you know, late in the third quarter. So never know what could have happened. Some big-time penalties have hurt, Mar hurt Marshall in this, in this ball game. Uh, and NC State was able to come up with two huge turnovers late to really finish it off defensively. Well, you coach off of that, too. You know that, Dustin, mm -hmm. as well as anybody. They're going to go back and look at this. But, you know, for NC State to come in well, after I'm that really disappointing really loss and, you know, get knocked around a couple of times – and then get back up and say, okay, look at yep. these numbers. They're almost identical. Litton had the one pick there, or they would have, you know. But two really good quarterbacks. You're there. You've been around the program there at Marshall quite a bit. Is Litton, he looks like an NFL player potentially. I mean, Finley does too, but, I mean, Litton had a great performance tonight. He has, I think, yeah. recommitted himself to the job and the leadership and all those, all those adjectives you read earlier. Yeah. I think he's embraced that. And you have to to be a good quarterback. Yeah, you I can have all the skills in the no world. No question. Listen, both of these guys have, have tremendous ability. My big takeaway from tonight was number eight for Marshall. That kid right there, Tyree Brady. He's got big smiles. I know he's disappointed about the loss, but, man, that guy has NFL talent. 250 yards receiving against a vaunted NC State defense. Terrific job. Lots of respect on both sides of the field. For Dustin Fox, I'm Keith Morehouse saying so long from Carter-Finley Stadium, where the final score is 37-20 NC State.
All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live on the ESPN app or to watch this entire game on replay, as well as other games on our family of ESPN networks. Log on to watchespn.com or download the Watch ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN.